The FBI's Uniform Crime Report, which is a survey taken county by county, state by state, has a limited and archaic definition of rape. The carnal knowledge of a female, forcibly and against her will. Under the definition, the following acts do not constitute a forcible rape. Can a man be raped? No. Is forced penetration of the vagina, anus, or mouth by a finger or object rape? No. Is forced sexual assault on a person unable to give consent rape? No. Incest? No. This definition was adopted in 1930. It must be changed. It worries me that this is not a high enough priority in some parts of the country in law enforcement. It worries us that there is no standard contemporary federal definition of rape. But there is no shortage of defense attorneys available to get accused rapists acquitted. Being accused of molesting a child is one of the nastiest accusations in law. Nobody supports you. You need somebody who is not only your lawyer, but your friend. The only friend that you have is your lawyer. The rest of the people out there think that you did something wrong. False allegations in sex crimes. There's a tremendous amount of lying in sex crimes. Up the against these legal operators, the victim has only the rapist's DNA to prove she was attacked. Why haven't all the rape kits been tested and the DNA uploaded to CODIS? Well, we feel a tremendous sense of frustration because we finally have a tool to solve rape cases and to protect the public from more sexual assaults, and it's not being used. It is frustrating. You know, it's a tool, but it's a tool that we can't fully utilize, and we haven't utilized it to this point. Criminalists are very expensive. There's not very many of them. They are what is required to test rape kits. Sometime back in the, di in the distant past, there was a fingerprint backlog because there was new technology. As things change, then we have to adapt. And if we haven't been quick enough to adapt, then, you know, shame on us. We have the capability, we have the science, we have the investigative uh, uh, expertise, but we just plainly don't have the money. Here's the problem. It's not the money. Well, you know, with a few million bucks, we can solve this. You know, so why haven't they? Because if we increase the pay for one group of public employees at the state, then other groups will say, hey, we're doing similar work, you've got to give us more money, and when you multiply it, you're not talking five or ten million, you're talking maybe hundreds of millions, and that is the resistance on the part of the state government. Tell that to the families of these young women. Do these men look to you like they swear to never rape again? Before you answer, remember, Rape is a recidivist crime. Rapists keep raping. We've had cases where someone was raped, was brought here for a forensic exam, evidence was collected, the evidence sat on the shelf for six months, and when it was finally opened, the rapist was caught. However, while it was sitting on the shelf, two other people were raped by the same offender, and one was a child. There are law enforcement officers who take finding the rapist seriously. Detective Tim Marshak drove six hours on his own time to find a lab that would test a rape kit. I checked it out of our property uh, division and put it in my car, jumped in the car and drove it up to Northern California. People are at work across the country demanding that rape kits be tested and rapists caught and convicted. Some activists speak for their cities. Others speak for the whole country. We turn now to Ms. Eleanor Smeal, President and Feminist Majority Foundation, former President of uh, the National Organization for Women. Thank you very much. Most rapists are serial rapists, and they were committing the bulk of the rapes between 91 and 95 percent. Rape kits are so important, and it's so important that they're processed. Because of the nature of serial rape, uh, you would be finding people who are now going undetected and who will rape again. It must be national standards and protocols, best practices, giving clear guidance to police officers about... Yes, Senator, we do need national standards, but before we can have that, we must have standardized reporting of rapes. 
What we have now varies from state to state. We also want to provide some support for things like DNA testing at the state level. This is where the national registry becomes so important, making sure that not only are we getting these DNA uh, tests done state by state, but then nationally, everybody's talking to each other. We're going to get support, bipartisan support from Congress on this issue. We are going to do everything in our power, as long as I'm in the White House, and as long as I'm the father of two girls, to make sure that we're providing the states the support that they need to make this happen. The tools for solving the rape kit backlog are in our hands. Not testing a rape kit is like taking a biopsy, but not bothering to find out if the person has cancer. No more excuses.